Hey everyone, Lucky Shot 13 here, and welcome back to another episode of Making Malaga. Uh, so you can see here while it's going through the screens um, that I'm a little bit farther ahead of where we left off. So let me quickly explain the fact that whenever I recorded episode two, I had corrupted face cam and corrupted audio on the file, so I couldn't use it. And then here, whenever I went to record episode three. Uh, it did not pick up my microphone. So I have since gone through and made a couple extra backups of the save, which I didn't have before, so that way I can re-record things if I if I need to, if something, if like file corruption or something like that happens whenever I do record. Um, and also, I have invested in some new equipment and some new editing software and everything like that to make sure that it all runs a little more smoothly. So as we take a quick look here at the league table, you can see that we are still sitting in, that we are sitting in, I shouldn't say still, that we are sitting in 13th uh, with two draws so far through the season with a home match versus Villarreal coming up. Now our team, I feel like, played pretty well in the two draws. I've just had some trouble on offense, you know, getting that going, finding our goal scorers and things like that. And of course we made uh, some transfers and everything like that to make sure everything goes smoothly so we'll be talking about that later with the lineup here on the screen so we'll cut right to the action here going on and in this match I just tried to control possession a little bit more and I was starting I guess Sandro out on the wing instead of striker and you can see right here he just bangs one home I mean Sandro is a guy who we originally thought we might play at striker, but it ends up he's just going to be better on the wing for us, I feel like, where he can cut in on his right foot, although I say that as he hits it with his left, um, and he just gives us such a great scoring option on the wing that I think that's where I'd prefer to use him, although I have been playing Paulson up front uh, as our striker we brought him in. As you can see here, we get a corner, it gets cleared out. You know, and, and I feel like we have a really scrappy team, a team that can come out and fight and win that second ball and get up there right here. Oh, Philip! oh my gracious, and testing the keeper right there, and he wins us a corner. And now Kiko's on the corner, and he's going to whip it in as well. And, uh, 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 uh no, and it's just not going to go anywhere with that. So right here, again, we're on the attack, we're on the attack, Kiko spins around here, takes a little finesse shot, and he was not far away. Uh, Kiko has found his way back into the starting lineup, even though we did go out and sign Daniel Podence uh, to play on that right wing, and he will probably be our right wing move a lot of the time moving forward, but Kiko gives us such a nice option out there on that right-hand side uh, with his experience and work rate. So right here, this was just the play of the match for me. Sandro gets it. Look look at the vision and the passing and then the finish by Kiko. And that's what I'm talking about. It's that experience and work rates that makes him so valuable to the team. And that's why he found himself in there for this home match against Villarreal that I felt like we needed to win to start to set the tone for the rest of the season. We needed a win under our belts because we have a young team. So, making a couple substitutions while we're doing that, I'll quickly talk about some of the people who we brought in, like Pedence. We brought in uh, Issa Diop as well to come in and play. We brought in Joao Paulinha. So, of course, there has been some ins and outs. Notably, Camacho has left. And that was a big deal for me because he wasn't a player that I particularly wanted to let go. But for the price that we got for him, and in my next live episode where I'm not having to do post-commentary, we will do a fully in-depth uh, transfer look at the team as you see Paulson chipping it over here on what I thought was a really nice ball in uh, and Paulson unfortunately his first touch was a little wide took him too close to the keeper so the chip wasn't able to convert so we brought Bailey in as our last substitution as this game here versus Villarreal as Sandro picks up a yellow card for a nasty challenge that I committed and then right here Villarreal I guess they it never really felt like they grew into the game it never felt like they created a lot of opportunities. Right here is a really good left-footed shot, but you wouldn't expect a keeper as big and as good as Donnarumma to be beaten at his near post like that on a weak foot. Uh, then, of course, the header from the, quarter, from the corner uh, goes well over the bar. So again, Villarreal coming up. They're pushing, they're pushing, just looking for anything. Just a little bit of pride so they don't get uh, shut out here on the road 
versus a team that had so far drawn their first two matches. And they get it out here on the edge of the box, and it's a shot, but Donnarumma, a nice little catch there, and that ends the game. And we pick up our first win in a official capacity for Malaga, that is not a friendly, of course. And I felt like we played a really nice game. You can see the possession skewed towards Villarreal at the end, but we had more shots, more shots on target. Uh, all in all, I just felt like in that match, we played better. So the next game that came up was an away match versus uh, Las Palmas. You can see him going through trying to find a kit that doesn't clash because uh, it seemed like everything else clashed. Um, and I'm showing these menus so you can always see that I do start the match on Legendary and that I don't change the time or anything like that. So Las Palmas here, this gets me. This is ridiculous. That right there is a penalty. That right there is a penalty. I'm so mad I speed through the replay really quick and it's it's absolutely ridiculous to me. I mean, look at this. He turns, he's going away from goal. A little Nick on the hill. A little Nick doesn't even fall down. And they call a penalty, and Hesse steps up to take it, and where will he go? Oh, top right corner. I mean, I guessed the wrong way. It was an awful attempt to even save it, but with a penalty like that, I don't think I would have saved it had I even guessed the correct direction. So, we try to get in on the action a little bit. We get a ball out here to Sandro. Some nice footwork here. We play it in. Pa oh, it's too much for Pauls and Phillip. And it's just not going to fall for us. That's when you know it's not your day when you get those balls coming back off the goalkeeper and there's just absolutely nothing you can do to try and tap it in. Your guys are just not in the position to make those runs. So Paulson at this point had made me mad, so Anesri gets to come in. The uh, Moroccan Ibrahimovic gets to try his hand at it. And then a little while later, uh, Philip comes off for Hesio, and we push Fornals ahead, which I felt like really helped us in the Via Real game to make a solid of the back. But Fornals gives us a little bit more than Philip in terms of passing. But you can see here that Las Palmas did not give up. They were pushing for the second goal. They wanted to put us completely out of the game. So we win a free kick late, and the header, and we put it off the post. And again, no one there at the far post when it comes off from the header to try and follow it up and put it in the back of the net. And I talk about us being gritty at the start, and this was a match where we were not gritty. We were gritty in our two draws and our one win, but in a match like this where we needed to be, we were not gritty at all. And you see here, I mean, Las Palmas just completely dominated us, really from the get-go. They kept pushing for goal. They kept coming at us. It didn't matter what we did. We couldn't get the ball off of them nothing it was just a really really poor effort from us i felt like and we just kept conceding corner after corner and shot after shot and there was just not much that we could do so i mean again i mean look at this sequence right here i mean we're trying we're trying to end up with a shot that donnarumma saves i mean after that we get it out and then look we give away another free kick shot time running down our team needing something to happen I kick it long with Donnarumma, you know, like my two main guys who I play at striker starting in sub are both like 6-4, neither one of them winning headers, okay? So we come in, I sim ahead, we need to rotate our squad, you know, we're going to rotate some players because we have a game very, very close uh, to this, uh, I believe it's Ibar is who we're playing to this Ibar match, and I decided, you know, play two games in sim, um, that was sort of my idea for the series coming in. Um, something that I feel like will just help it flow uh, a lot better in terms of how much ground we're able to cover in a single uh, in like one YouTube season uh, versus any other format. So we made a couple changes to the lineup and we come into this match at home versus Ibar on the sim, a match that I feel like we can win. I mean, Don Romo, Rosales, Dimichaelis is in there. We still have our best left back, our our you know our first choice midfield, essentially. Philip Pudent, Sandra. I mean, we have all these great young players. I guess the good news for us is, is the fact that we are going to grow into our season, and the team is only going to get better. You can see that Ibar takes an early lead against us on the road, but we are able to come back through Villanueva. And get that goal, and if we can just hold out, and we do, we manage to hold out for a draw. 
So looking through that, we have Real Batiste right off the back. I mean, one day break and then Batiste. So Choa's not happy. He may actually get his chance uh, versus, the, versus Batiste because we are going to try and make some changes. And that is a local rival of ours. Um, so uh, we can take a quick look uh, at who we're going to be playing coming up. So, of course, we in the next episode, we'll be playing Batiste live com. We'll have a live com versus Bilbao. And then we will sim the game versus Alaves with uh, Leganes and a cup match coming up after that. Okay? So, again, uh, Batiste, Bilbao, and uh, Alaves in the next match. And that did leave us on six points through five matches and in 11th place. So, again, uh, I hope that y'all do understand uh, why I had to make the changes I made to this episode and why I had to do post commentary instead of live commentary. Again, I, I hope that y'all, you know, understand that uh, and can understand uh, my reasoning. But again, we'll be back with the next episode with episode, officially episode three will be live commentary me doing that instead of post -com. so again thanks for taking time out of your day to watch i hope that you're enjoying the series so far please let me know players who you think i should buy sell or anything like that down in the comments below so uh this has been lucky shot 13 and i'll see y'all next time